When a fellow composer suggested that he write a requiem, the great composer Giuseppe Verdi responded, there are so many, many, many requiem masses. There's no point in adding one more. Besides, Verdi had just completed yet another fantastically grand opera, Aida, the one with the elephants on stage. He was one of the world's most celebrated composers, and now, in his 60s, he was looking forward to a leisurely retirement. The death of Verdi's favorite author and one of Italy's leading artists changed his resolve. A few years earlier, Verdi had been involved in writing another requiem to commemorate that prolific opera composer, Giacchino Rossini. When he passed away at the age of 76, thousands attended his funeral and memorials were given throughout Italy and France. In a letter written to his publisher and to Italian newspapers, Verdi proposed that Italy's most celebrated composers jointly write a requiem mass to honor Rossini and to be performed on the anniversary of his death. This would be a requiem by committee. Each composer would write only a single section of the mass. There would be serious problems with artistic unity, but Verdi insisted that it would serve to show how great in all of us is the veneration for that man whose loss the whole world mourns. Anyone who has served on a committee would be amazed to discover that all of the selected composers finished their assignments on time. But because the composers and performing musicians were asked to fund the enterprise themselves, and there were all sorts of turf issues involved, it is no surprise that a performance of the Rossini Requiem never got off the ground. Verdi's contribution to the joint Requiem was the last section, the Liberame, so he had at least part of a Requiem already written. Now, another icon of Italy's artistic heritage was near death, Alessandro Manzoni. When he was 16, Verdi read Manzoni's novel I Promessi Sposi, a book the latter proclaimed as not only the greatest book of our epic, but one of the greatest ever to emerge from the human brain. Verdi idolized Manzoni. I would have knelt before him if men could be worshipped, he said. When Manzoni died, Verdi despaired. Now it is all ended, and with him ends the purest, the most holy, the highest of our glories. Once again, Verdi proposed a requiem to honor, insofar as I can, this great man, whom I so admired as a writer and venerated as a man, model of virtue and of patriotism. This time, however, he would write the whole thing, pay for the copying of the music himself, and conduct the rehearsals and the performance. He resurrected and reworked the Liberame from the earlier enterprise and completed the other sections in the space of about eight months. This time, the performance actually took place and on the anniversary of Manzoni's death. Verdi's Requiem mixes the intense drama of his operatic style, the spirituality of the Roman Catholic Mass for the Dead, and the expected grandiosity of music for a public celebration of an important national figure. The Requiem begins mysteriously dark and solemn. Light enters as the chorus sings a hymn of praise and then, as the soloists enter in the Kyrie eleison, the tone becomes even more elevated. In each section, and there are often many sections within the individual prayers, Verdi focuses on a key word or thought and mines it for all of its dramatic worth. This is especially noticeable in that powerful 13th century prayer, the Dies Irae. From the pounding of the bass drum at the beginning to the antiphonal brass, a listener has to feel that the day of judgment has arrived in the concert hall. After such a life-threatening experience, the impassioned pleading of the Domine Jesu brings a much needed deliverance. Then, another blaze of brass and a double choral fugue introduces the Sanctus. The Agnus Dei and the Lux Eterna finally give us some rest. Fear and trembling return in the Libra May 
with such force that we plead, along with the soprano and the chorus, deliver me.